I want to own a cake business. I want to run a successful bakery business. I want to be a cake boss. But do you know what it takes to really run a properly organized cake business? I'll be sharing with you some insider processes, structures, and things you need to know to run a successful bakery business. Let's go. Hello and welcome to another edition of Kicking All The Way with me, your host, Luladio Gujimi. So if you love all things cake business, cake tips, cake demo, you are in the right place. So you love the intro of this episode, right? I mean, it's so easy for you to sit down in your space and admire other cake businesses who seem to get it right. But do you know what it really takes? Well, you're in luck. You're here with me today and I'll be sharing with you the literal tips, processes, and procedures we had to adapt as a business. And to a large extent, it helps us to channel our energy to the right things. And it's almost like clockwork. If you do this, you get this effect. If you do that, you get that effect. So to add some icing onto this topic, let me share with you a personal story. I got my first job, which was at Virgin Atlantic Airways. And I was there for about five years where I doubled as a liaison officer and also a customer service operator so everyone traveling to the uk to the us or anywhere really around the world my job then was to make sure we got them the right ticket we got them the right routes and most importantly we just got them a good deal with good customer service so i left virgin atlantic with those skills before i actually started my baking business and to a large extent I came out of that experience with Virgin Atlantic, really knowing how to speak to customers, answering emails, and being all professional. And I thought that was going to be enough for me to run my new cake business. But I was wrong. The dynamics when you are working in a nine to five is completely different when you're working for yourself, a new business, and is also creative related. Believe me, guys, I was not ready for what I was literally getting myself into. I had left a well-organized environment, my 9 to 5 with Virgin Atlantic, into a business of my own that did not have a single structure. So I was all over the place. The phone lines would ring from morning, literally all the way to the evening. And I was taking orders constantly. I mean, constantly. There was no break. And what happened to me was, at the end of the day, I suffered what is called a burnout because I literally did not have a life outside the bakery. You know, a baking business is very unique. Usually customers come into your world or your creative world and they love what they see. They love what they taste. And most times what they see is just the finished work, but they have no clue as to what happened to actually bring that cake to life. We're talking from baking the cake, to decorating the cake, to transporting the cake. And if you're a cake maker and you really understand what I'm talking about and continue to add up onto that amount of workload per day, it will be exhausting if you don't know what to do. So I always tell my clients, really people who, who you know, come to me to consult for their baking businesses, is that having a skill in that particular art is different. But actually knowing how to manage that art so that you're not overwhelmed or overcome by the popularity you seem to have gotten is an art on its own and it must be learned. So let's take it from the top now. A customer wants your service. Your cakes taste amazing. You make the most beautiful cakes and you've become the talk of the town. Everyone is talking about you. Or... You're trying to get into a space where you win the confidence of people, customers, right? What are the things you need to do? So whether you become popular or the popular cake maker, or you're trying to get yourself out there, the rules of engagement remain the same. So what are the rules of engagement? Number one, a customer will come calling, right? Good. If you have watched our video where I talked about how to start a cake business from scratch, if you haven't watched that and check that on the link below. If you had watched that video, I spoke extensively as to why you have to have a phone of your own 
or a phone that is dedicated to your cake business strictly. All right. And so let's say a customer finds that number online or through referral, they've given you a call. They're most likely to be like, hi, is this Dainty Affairs or hi, is this Lola Day? I would love to have a cake. What should your response be like? Now, I like to tell cake makers that your response should almost be like clockwork. Any customer calling you is calling you to solve a problem. Yes, they are doing you a favor by wanting to patronize you, but you are doing them more of a favor. So look at that. You have become a problem solver. So when people call you to solve a problem, do you think you should be stuttering on the phone or you should speak assertively and friendly on the phone? Now, to paint a better picture, if you go to the hospital and you want to see a doctor and the doctor is not sounding as professional or assertive as possible, you're going to wonder, this doctor, does he know what he's going to do? Or is he going to give me the right prescription? You know, so see yourself first and foremost as a problem solver. And you have, for goodness sake, gone through a lot to attain that position where people are calling you to solve a problem for them. So that's good for you. You have become reputable. You have become a VIP. Yes? Yes. So what I'm trying to say is get yourself in order. Don't let that be the time where you're stuttering. You should have a ready-made answer. For example, when you call us identity affairs, you're most likely to hear one of the reps who pick up the phone answer you by saying, hi, this is Dainty Affairs. How can I make your day sweeter? That sounds cool, right? Yes. Immediately, you can tell that anyone calling is already happy that we have responded to them over the or the person responding to them on the other line sounds friendly and wants to make their day sweeter. What do you think about that? Already, that's going to literally influence the energy the customer is going to give to you. So I'm not saying you should say, oh, hello, this is your business. How can I make your day sweeter? I'm just saying, just have a response that is witty or intelligent. And most importantly, will warm your customers up to you. So whatever that response is, you want to write it down. And once you have written it down, what is the customer on the other line going to say? I want a cake for so-so and so. You're also expected to ask for the flavoring, if there's a theme, if it's for a male or a female, if it's for a child or an adult. You know, you're most likely to ask some specific questions all the time. So you want to make sure you write this down. So it's now like a dialogue. So for everyone that calls your bakery, what is the dialogue? between you and this customer most likely to sound like? And what is the response for each question asked by this customer? What answer follows the questions? Make sure you write that down. Now, when you start doing that, that is what is called standardization of your phone conversation. And you will find out that once you have standardized what your phone conversation is, guess what? someone else can actually pick those calls for you while you do other things. Have you ever been mixing a cake or decorating a cake and you're speaking to a customer? Oh, hi, what's the name of the customer? You know, it's, it's quite demanding and it can be frustrating for you. And if you're able to get phone calls from your day-to-day -day duties in the bakery, you will find out that you're able to breathe and you're able to focus on the business properly. I'm not saying that speaking to your customers shouldn't be your day-to-day -day job, but everybody wants to run a successful business. And though we start small, we want to grow big. And once you begin to think in that route, you need to put processes and systems in place that would allow your business to run effectively without you. And making sure that your phone conversation is standardized is one of them. How did that sound? Easy, right? Now that you have a template of how the phone conversation or dialogue with your customers should go, now let's talk about your interior operations, aka your day-to-day -day runnings. So are you working by yourself or do you have a team? So whether it's two, three, four, five, ten, hundred, that standardization is what will make sure that everything literally goes in like conveyor belt mode. So take for instance, 
someone calls and they want a 10 inch buttercream cake now you already understand that as a business you're either doing a swiss meringue buttercream or the regular american buttercream so your job now is to decode everything the customer wants and be able to express it properly with your sugar with your flour with your eggs right so let's say you're baking a 10 inch cake from the conversation or one of the conversations you had and you take it to the operations that means they have to bake a 10 inch cake now depending on how your 10 inches cakes are baked in your bakery you also need a roadmap that will direct both you and your staff to make sure that that 10 inch cake is baked in the appropriate height in the appropriate recipe and in the appropriate quantity all right so when i say quantity do you bake your 10 inches cake and at the end of the day is five inches tall do you bake your 10 inches cake and it is two inches tall do you bake your 10 inches cake and it is what almost like a double barrel yes it is a 10 inch cake but the recipe you're going to use to make a two inch tall cake or a five inch tall cake or a double barrel cake is going to differ so it is important that you document exactly what it takes to get each of your cake pans in the right size and in the right measurement does that make sense let me break it down here at dainty affairs all our cakes are at least between one and a half or two inches high so no matter the height of the cake it's about us stacking all these various heights i've just mentioned until we reach the appropriate height so for us as a business our buttercream cakes are not the same height as our fondant finished cakes okay there's a bit of disparity in what they look like at the end of the day because we like our fondant cake a lot fuller bigger and a lot more grand so to speak so we like to make them really big so the recipe we would use for a 10 inch buttercream cake even though it might be the same recipe we use for a 10 inch fondant cake but because they're gonna have different heights we now have to bake it either less or more so it's important that the staff that will execute this knows exactly what they are going to bake remember the staff didn't pick up the call the call was picked up either by you or your customer care rep. And it is, you know, important for your customer care rep to get that information to whoever is going to bake the cake so that the appropriate cake is baked. So these are the things that help you to organize your operations team a lot better when everything is documented and everyone is clear about what they're supposed to do. So once the customer care rep or the customer care department has taken that information from the customer they have to give that information to the operations team where you have the bakers and the cake decorators and there has to be something that they can refer to to understand exactly what they are supposed to execute so it has to be picture form and of course text what size of cake what recipe of cake what type of cake is it buttercream is it fondant all right and what are the flavors that the customer has selected once it is there for them to see they can execute appropriately so you see how we went from documenting the phone dialogue or the phone conversation to now documenting actually what the bakers need to put together to be able to execute the exact cake that will be baked for that order so here at dainty affairs we have something that the baking and decorating department so we call it a manuscript or prototype so as you can see well i literally had to form this but i formed this based on just sitting back and seeing the issues we had and how we needed to solve those issues so for a long time we had to be printing this out and giving it to the staff to fill every single day but that was a waste of resources and a waste of ink so i got our local printer and i just gave him all the information and he came up with this booklet and this booklet is what it's binded this is used literally every day and i had to make sure that it was rugged enough to withstand the daily handling because every member of staff in the baking and decorating department needs to fill this booklet and what does this booklet entail now if i open it for you let me just open the 
the second page. Now, you can see the interface, I mean, all the intro. And then there's something here, which is like a cutout picture of the specific cake that was made. And all the information here talks about all that was done to bring this cake to life. What was baked? What recipe? So this was an 8-inch cake, and it was baked as a vanilla cake, strawberry, and a chocolate cake. And then the next line now shows exactly the weight of each batter. How cool is that? <laughs> now, I'm laughing because sometimes we get so overwhelmed with the day-to-day -day running of the bakery. We don't stop to think about things we really need to do to solve the issues we had. Sometimes it gets overwhelming, it gets daunting. And when you start to document things, even for yourself, even if you don't have a staff, it just takes away that you know, time you're going to sit and think, oh, the last time I made this cake, what was the size? What was the recipe? What was the height of the pan? This just takes that away because everything is documented. So this particular manuscript the one I'm holding is for the baking department. So the decorating department also has their version. And on their version, they actually write exactly what it took to bring that particular cake to life design-wise. All right? I hope this helps. Now, from this now, we've talked about the first point of call, which is where the customer gets in touch with your business. So where you take all that information and pass it on to the execution stage. Now, the cake is ready. And the cake is going to go off to delivery, right? First and foremost, I hope you're not the one delivering that cake by yourself. You need to understand that those are two different services. I don't have a problem with you delivering your cakes. But remember, if you're still working by yourself, it's already overwhelming for you to do this cake. Now imagine you make this cake and you now have the responsibility of delivering this cake. That would be a lot for you. So what I usually advise is for cake makers, first and foremost, you would have tried one or two delivery services and I'm sure one of them is a lot more reputable, responsible and can manage your cakes. All right, have an arrangement with them and make sure that that delivery service is paid for. Remember, these are two completely different services. Creating your cake, remember you're solving a problem, and then the part of your business that relies on transportation to take that finished good from you to the end user. That should also be a paid service. So if you're delivering a cake by yourself, you make sure you charge for that service. It should not be free. And if you have a customer who is trying to stifle you and make you feel like, oh, it should be an added service, remind them of things like if they go on Amazon and shop, does Amazon bring it to them for free? Even if they're on prime shipping, there's a process that makes prime shipping gets to them, you know, at a specific time and it has been arranged. Now, for things like wedding cakes, I would advise that you deliver those kind of cakes by yourself. And if you have a very good staff member who's been with you for a while and understands the intricacies that come with delivering a wedding cake or a, an elaborate custom cake, you want to make sure you deliver that by yourself. You know, wedding cakes and elaborate custom cakes cost a lot of money. And you want to make sure that the integrity of that cake is guided from when you have finished it up onto the place it is set up. So for stuff like that, of course, by all means, Deliver your cake by yourself and make sure you charge for delivery and set up. All right? I'm sure your customers will be happy to do that because you're solving a problem for them. Now, let's talk a bit about the dynamics of delivery. Now that you know you have to charge and charge properly for that, depending on what the customer have ordered or has ordered, you might need to get a dispatch or a proper vehicle. Now, here in Nigeria, we refer to the dispatch companies that use bikes as dispatch. And what can you send by dispatch? You can't send your cupcakes by dispatch. Ice cupcakes with all those fancy decorations, you can't send them by dispatch. You can't send a finished buttercream cake by dispatch. 
So that's a complete no-no. So what then can you send by dispatch? Cookies, brownies, cup desserts, you know, anything that is compactly packaged and that can withstand rigorous driving or the road map of wherever you live. Here in Lagos, Nigeria, we know what traffic situation is like. And sometimes the routes to some specific addresses are not usually the best. There are a lot of potholes here and there. So you want to make sure that you have guided your sanity by making sure you send the right products through the right mediums. Okay? So I've just said to you, anything that is dessert, treats like, but is compact. And you're very, very sure even if they're driving rough and they enter potholes, the integrity of that product will be protected. By all means, sent by dispatch. Now, if it's a cake that has to be taken by a vehicle, you want to make sure that that vehicle is in proper order, meaning it is a good car. You want to make sure most times you want to send your cakes in an air-conditioned vehicle. Why? And all those beautiful fillings and frostings on your cake have been made with butter or something that is decadent or chocolate or something that can melt. And you want to make sure that the cake is sitting in an air-conditioned car. That way, the integrity of your cake is kept. You also want to make sure that whoever is driving the car knows exactly how to manage your cakes. You also want to make sure that you or one of your staff has positioned the cake in the right part of the car. And where is the right part of the car? Usually I'd like to say put the cake box on a straight platform and a straight platform in your car is usually on the floor or in the trunk. And if that cake is so big, it can't sit on the you know leg area in that car. You wanna make sure that you have propped your cake up so that the cake isn't slanting at the back seat. If the cake is slanting at the back seat, guess what? The cake is going to end up squashing or, you know, getting messed up at the back. But once you have propped up, either by putting a book or even your umbrella or something that will just allow the cake to sit straight, you will notice that the cake can go better, you know, through that journey and get to your customer in good order. You also want to make sure that whoever is doing your delivery knows how to manage your cakes let them know the dynamics even if they haven't you know taken a cake before let them just understand that when they're going and they're going to get to speed breakers they need to slow down and if they want to enter potholes they need to take it easy to make sure that the cake doesn't get messed up in the car now what happens that the cake has successfully gotten to the place it will be delivered now who is receiving the cake has that been documented? What time was this cake received? You want to make sure that that delivery personnel has a form that the person who receives the cake fills so that you can avoid stories that touch the heart. Have you ever made a cake before and the person who ordered the cake is not there? And you now have to drop the cake with someone that the customer didn't tell you about. So it's always important that even at the very beginning, when you are getting delivery information from the customer, you want to ask the customer, if you're not around, who is most likely to receive this cake? And what is the phone number of this person? So that there is communication. And most importantly, when the delivery has gotten there and they give it to whoever receives the cake, someone has signed for it that this cake has been received in the right order. That is peace of mind, isn't it? Now, I'm already getting your mind thinking out of the box or out of things you're not usually, you know, accustomed to thinking. Now, a cake business is that deliberate. So from that very moment of the phone conversation to the executing, to the delivery, to the handing over to the cake, it's a cycle. And that cycle must be completed for each time you take on a cake project. So you see why documenting all your processes is so important. Now, to be honest with you, there's a lot more that has to do with bakery systems and operations. So if you'd like to know more about this, I would advise that you would take a bakery business structure class or one of our mentorship programs. So you see, I want to run a cake business. I want to run a cake business. It's not enough. 
you need to know how to properly carry the day-to-day -day activities seamlessly. So now that the cycle has been completed, it is now your responsibility as a business owner, not just to document all the processes, but to make sure that you carefully train everyone around you as to how to execute based on the standard of your business. And this entirely depends on your company mission, vision, and core values. Now, that is a mouthful, but there's just so much to talk about when it comes to running a cake business. So thank you so much for joining me on this edition. I hope you've learned a thing or two. And if you did, make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends. Happy caking, guys. Till next time, have a lovely day. Bye.